Yep, recording now. Okay. So, oops. Sorry, getting unwind here. Uh, okay, so, uh, Ooh, controllers come back. Okay, here we go. So here's where we left off last week, right? I brought in a background for later. Um, we left off basically having modeled the body and some wheels. We're working on half of the car and then we're going to dupe the other over. So let's bring up our reference, uh, which we, you know, always like to have so that we can, um, work off of reference always. And uh, so I actually rotated the car 90 degrees, uh, to the scene because when I brought in this looping background, I realized I had modeled it in the X axis, but regardless, um, here's a, here's like the reference I used, right? So I'm just going to keep, keep bringing that up to sort of, um, make sure I get all of these. Uh, these are reflection sort of studies helps me sort of understand how I want black metal. Cause it's going to be a black car, shiny black car in the desert to look. Um, and then some of this is also just for reference. So, uh, working on what we want to still do on this guy that's left basically where we left off is the engine, the grill. Uh, we're going to put some lights in sort of the, the suspension stuff down in here. And, you know, the headers, the exhaust headers that come off of the engine and, and all the animation that'll happen off of those, which is fun. That's like half the fun of a hot rod, right? When you stylize it and things like that. So, oh, and then I'll put some graphics, some kind of graphics on the car as well, just to show you how you can mix graphics with uh, uh, car paint in a quill sort of fashion. Okay. So here's our car. Let's start with the engine block. So we're going to go into car all. I've been grouping all this in ways that I can sort of access it and color it. So I've got canopy body main. I'm going to make a new group and call it uh, engine. Oops. Okay. So to do an engine, we're a uh, hot rod engine. We're basically going to keep it really primitive. I'm going to use, instead of modeling like I did with the body where I use strokes and sort of move them around, sort of build a surface, I'm going to do this as like uh, primitive shapes and tube ex extrusions and then dupe it. So let's start with like a basic engine block. Uh, let's like use the cube. So I'm trying to stay a little optimized here. Um, so, you know, I'm not doing too much uh, thinking about this right now, but basically I'm thinking of like half of an engine, how that's going to roughly look. And it doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, I'll show you on the, on the Lincoln model how I got detailed, but more or less it's a collection of um basic form so you have your manifold up here some sort of you know mm. things like this and then i want to do uh again every brush type that you use does cost you another draw call and a draw call is expensive when you're going to quest but in this case i'm going to say you know i'm going to be a little uh uh more just lenient on my budget because i want to show you just some varieties of things you can do so you know uh, cylinders things like that are typically part of engine blocks so you want to do you know things like that so you got your sort of your ports this is an eight cylinder engine, so it'll have four per side, a V8. Um, okay, and then you're gonna get uh, just- Mike, you mentioned a manifold. What is that? What is a manifold? Uh, it's just like a cover for the engine block where all the like, when your pistons and all that stuff are moving around, um, you know, ca causing combustion, uh, that, 
a chamber is is has got to be sealed. It takes a lot of pressure, and so like your manifold, or it's like part of like the engine block that sort of covers the engine. In hot rods and in things like that, where they expose the engines, people take pride in custom making parts like that. Air filters is another one you'll find like really beautifully done air filters with like covers and paint and detail and pinstriping. Uh, Headers, these these tubes, these are like custom exhaust systems that vent all the incredible heat that come off of uh, these engines. Um, these are always customized and done in really incredible ways because, you know, exhaust is complex. The, the distance exhaust has to travel matters. And so uh, you wind up having to wind it around the car in weird ways. And then people became artistic about it. And in, in a hot rod, this is a great opportunity, especially with Quill. Boy, is this fun. So if you look at cartooning and hot rods and things like that in, in art like that, they accentuate that stuff. It's, it's fun to do. And it's just like a joy in Quill. Um, so, so that's what those parts are. Uh, you know, air filters, things like that. All the different parts of an engine vary, but the basic components are the same. You got your belts and gears and stuff working in the front, your, your, your combustion chambers here, your headers and stuff at the top, and then your exhaust ports coming out. So that's generally what it is. And then you dupe that on both sides. Um, and then your air. Oh, this is like actually a car class. Well. Car class, yeah. <laughs> air filters. Air filters are these things that you know uh, take the air and filter it so that it can uh, combine properly for combustion. And that's the kind of stuff that you see people customizing with stuff on on tops of cars often a lot too. So. Uh, I mean, how how much it helps to to know the subject that you're building honestly if it's you're, true if you're building a car it helps that you know about cars and how they built yep and, and and the same happens with uh, human beings or totally know, anatomy and all this. i could tell when you were doing it because i've just like i told you i recently was taking anatomy classes that it's like oh yeah all these little things matter and you don't know <laughs> This is actually exactly why, um, like in like animation production, like movies and such, like that from Disney and DreamWorks and stuff. This is actually also part of the job of a biz dev artist to yeah. not just give a reference, but really understand it, right? Because yep. then you will design things a certain way, and you, you can create uh, your designs in a way that it makes sense, and it Absolutely. actually is based on something that's real. And that's why, like, a lot of times I see students, they just put reference images just in terms of, like, oh, yeah, I, I looked at the color and stuff like that. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. There's, like, so much more to reference, like, to really <laughs> understand um, how everything works, right? Because design follows function. And um, it's important, like, for so example, true. like, that way, like, you can see how Mike breaks down his engine because he, he knows what mm -hmm. he needs to make it look functional yeah. or and it doesn't yeah. have to actually work but it, <laughs> it's about believability believability right? yeah to, exactly to, and to exactly. get to that it's good to know uh, as much as possible about the subject being curious about learning different things especially yeah. as an artist so true it's oh, yeah. so true yeah. i th i think that's the kind of thing you know that does matter it's like the details and not everyone appreciates it until you notice it like if it's missing you may not notice it you're like oh i guess that looks fine but if you if someone puts it in you will notice ah oh, that is much better now i understand why so uh, sometimes it's not apparent when nobody knows uh the things are there for a reason that right? things are there for a reason yeah or that yeah, one person that does know what it is and you get that one person right exactly like it just takes one and then and then suddenly ah i see so you shouldn't assume because it's not there that it shouldn't be there basically um yeah a lot of times like um i had it when i was <coughs> excuse me when i was looking at reference um that there's something that i cannot explain i'm like why is this um <laughs> modeled in a specific way and then mm -hmm. i did some research and there's a reason mm -hmm. And then it's like super interesting. And then you try to bring that in. And if your production designer asks, why did you do this? And then you're like, ha, you know what? Like in real life, they do this thing. And mm -hmm. I thought this was really cool. 
So this is my my version of that. And then then it's like instantly, you know, much more powerful. And then if you say like, oh, I did it because it looks cool, that's not gonna fly, you know. <laughs> totally. Uh, totally, totally. I honestly I mean making things look cool is also a part of our job, but <laughs> it's true. It's not, it's not everything. You know? yeah. No, it's not and <laughs> and it's like it can look cool if it's grounded in some reality. I think exactly, yeah. Um, because you know what to distort when you know how it's supposed to be. Yep. If you don't, you might be distorting random things, taking a guess, you know, like what it should be. Um, yeah, one of the twelve principles of animation is exactly that. It's called appeal, and it's like mm. you know, spending quite a lot of time making the character or the props or the sets mm -hmm. more appealing. Um, no matter what resource you 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 need to use, you know, as long as the character or the object is appealing, you're doing it right. <laughs> it's very true. It's very true, and it's a lot of it is about not breaking that uh, the believability, you know, not breaking character basically with your style or whatever you're doing. So it's like consistent, like suspension of disbelief, basically. Um, and I mean, I'm playing here just with these shapes. It doesn't really matter. It's kind of fun. But boy, is the grab tool fun for that. Okay. So talking about, talking about the grab tool, yeah. do you have any recommendation for avoiding the twisting? Because the, sometimes it happens mm. you're, you're grab tooling something and it, the, you can, you can see the geometry like twisting like crazy. Yeah. Yes, I yes. actually don't know why that happens. Um, <laughs> like it yeah, starts I, I to warp. I noticed like that if you grab it from like if that happens, you you mean that it twists sometimes three sixty, right? And I saw like it tw like twerks. I saw that yeah. the whole geometry yeah. just kind of starts mm -hmm. rotating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what I notice is when you grab it from like a different side, that it yeah. it it bends correctly. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't have a real tip for that. <laughs> I've had a little bit of luck uh, going in with the optimization brush and just touching those areas, and it still oh, yeah? doesn't turn it back to normal, but it makes less geometry focus in that yeah. area, so you can oh, even grab tool it and still spin it and try right. to get it back to normal. I see. Mm. That's cool. Yeah, I, I, I've encountered a couple of moments where, just like Mike is doing right now with the tube, yeah. uh -huh, uh -huh. And bending and stuff, and suddenly that corner becomes like... Oh, Warped, like it does this. Warped, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Um, I know, like sometimes I'm sure with a character it's worse. With this, it probably doesn't matter, but you can see it if you turn. Uh, what is it? This one on. You can actually see the the trying. This one's not bad because I optimized. Yeah. I guess this one's not bad, but I have seen it oh, like suddenly torque. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that mode right there is really useful. This grid is just a screen space grid. It's not actually yeah. your triangles, you know. So that's a yeah. deceptive thing. Um, yeah. But it's useful, very useful. It's okay. Useful. Yeah, that's yeah, sometimes the, the real wireframe gets just way too dense. Yeah, dark, insane, so yeah. It messes especially... with your color, right? Totally, totally. Yeah. Um, plus, this is nice because it fades based on your brush, brush yeah, distance. Yeah, if you move your hand away. Yeah. Yep. So, okay, so I got the one header in there. Basically, it's, four, it's an eight cylinder, so four per side. So you just kind of dupe, move. And then I can uh, grab tool this one a little bit further away. Have you ever driven one? <laughs> no, not like a 32. <laughs> this is like a 32 Ford. So these are like old roasters, but I've seen many. Um, I've ridden in a few, but I've never driven one because honestly, people that own these do not want anyone driving them or touching uh, them barely. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <looking> even, them. <laughs> yeah, even at car shows, you get too close and people like look at you like, are, are you going <laughs> to scratch that? Because if you scratch it, I'll kill you. You know, they get upset. So they get, uh, you have to really be cautious. Even sometimes people's I mean, jewelry. Like generally always custom made, right? Yes, yes. And that's the whole point, kind of, is custom made. But, you know, sometimes they'll do uh, uh, modern engines. Like I've seen, um, I've seen uh, 
I've seen hot rods that are using like uh uh, like a Cadillac, like if this is a Ford, they might put like a custom brand new Lincoln Continental 12 cylinder engine in it or something, which is really nice. Oh. Then you're driving a completely modern car. Uh, so but all hot uh, rods are unique. Kind of. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. In fact, they are all unique. Uh, there's places like uh, I actually, when I got out of art uh, design school, I did work very briefly for boyd coddington hot rods which is um a hot rod maker in Cal uh, southern california and they're famous they do you know mm. hot rods for movie stars and stuff and um boyd coddington is like this hot rodder from like the 40s i think or he's like an old guy but well known but really fun learning experience that shop they that's the closest to production hot rodding that you can get um, because it's a custom place that does it. Um, but they're still one off. So, so this is kind of like, you know, this kind of header stuff is also an art, like people that do this stuff and the way they twist them and all that, it actually makes a difference. In this case, since I put reflections on each of these individually, it's not working when I stack them like this. So what I'll do is I'll grab them all again and just go in and probably multiply all of these down here. See if that works, right? Just to get them generally dark. And then here's another thing you can do. So headers definitely don't want to be all warbly looking. Um, so this is a cool thing that you can do is like, instead of adding a lot of geo to this tube to make sure it has like a crisp highlight on it, like this Chrome does, you can just draw it with a line. And I like to do that more because it saves polygons. It gives me more control and it's, uh, I think it just looks better too. It just gives me more control. So that's, that's the ultimate. So you're essentially defining, you're cheating the eye by defining this, with a line instead of um right so from there that's fine and then you can dupe that and make it uh, we're at the 20 minutes mark Right. So that's kind of like your headers, right? And I also, you don't need to see all of them, by the way. So if it looks a little messy, I just move it. But this is essentially the process. Also, if you want to, you know, like that's, that's a tube, it's empty in there. So I'm going to, rather than actually hollow it out, I'll just, you know, draw it. Uh, could do it this way, could do it this way. That's a different brush, so. Let's do you can use a rounded one, right? You can. These are cool. Sometimes you'll see people do like square. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> it's just to show you that like it doesn't really matter. Uh, when you draw it, you can do anything. It's like more or less you're fooling the eye from the distance. It's kind of when Daniel was doing the character and he would do like a curl on the silhouette. Uh, this is a lot faster and cheaper and still fits that granularity of style that, uh, than sitting there and modeling it as a tube. Oh yeah. The, the, the holes of the, the holes of the exhaust. Yeah, exactly. Or like yeah, a reflection it's, it's like this, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, sometimes we have to be graphic instead of graphic or these, these tire highlights. These are just psh, psh, yeah. instead of sitting there and doing every one. Okay. So yeah. this is there. So now let's add some highlights to these guys. On the, on the little corners of that cylinder. Yeah, exactly. Like you could do that. I also think the top surface is important enough to just oh, give yeah, it, that's true. Yeah, give that, it its own a nice contrast of top. And one thing about lighting that's important is 
there's always like Goro went over this kind of there's there's like a first read and then there's a second read and then there's like multiple other reads that first read wants to be like where's the light coming from and so like you're always just gonna have a, a hard light and a dark don't worry about bounced light and colors and hue and all that and the difference in a lit situation between the lit and the dark is pretty extreme. It's never going to be close. And that's it. That one rule gives you a good sense of first read. So as long as you do that, all the other subtle stuff can come after. Like, oh, this one wants to be a little darker. Yeah, one cool phrase I learned is um, black in, uh, in light mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is brighter than white in shadow. Right, 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 right. Right, exactly. Because the light, the lit up stuff is so much stronger, in, essentially. Yeah. yeah. So if you have a black cube, like a black wooden cube, um, uh, in light, the high highlight area is lighter than the shadow area of a white cube. Right. It's crazy. Is it is interesting. It seems like wrong, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so there's that. The other thing you want to do is all your suspension gear. Um, you want to kind of... I'm just going to move. Yeah, that's just that nudge. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so your suspension and all that sort of sits under here. So I'm going to put all that in the same file. And I'll use a cube brush because it honestly, it doesn't really matter. And you don't have to go crazy. This is another thing people do a lot of custom work with, but it's fun to... Yeah. So essentially I I use the line because when you're holding the left uh trigger, it sticks to XYZ. Um I imagine how much fun it would be to design cars for something like Mad Max or something like that. Yeah, like, totally, like, man. This, uh, post apocalyptic world where people just grab pieces from anywhere and just Absolutely. build the car. You know, I went to the Peterson Museum. Are you you ever been there? Which one? Which one? Uh, the Peterson Museum here in LA. Uh you know, I have. Yes, I know which one you're talking about. Yep. Yeah, and they had this whole exposition of uh, movie cars. Yeah. It's oh amazing. God, it's so, so much fun. So, so much fun. fun, right? They had this uh, Mad Max, then the new movie, and they had this. this oh man, car. I went, I went way before Mad Max. That would have been amazing. Oh, oh this, this car that you're designing reminds me of yeah. that because it, it has the same canopy. Like yes, canopy, and then it was all you know custom built with the, all the magnets craziness. <laughs> totally, it was so it was so beautiful, so crazy, like. It's like steampunk almost. Super steampunk and, you know, just crazy fun. And it was right there in the, you could see it. You That's could so cool. It, see it close, yeah. And they also had all these futuristic cars and all these movie, you know. They have like, didn't they have the DeLorean, a Back to the Future DeLorean? Yeah, yeah. It, has, it has all these beloved cars that I love to see in person. The right, DeLorean right. It was amazing. I, I kind of sat down inside also. Uh-huh. Oh, oh man, I know it's crazy. It's so cool. I actually did a 3D video with my my 3D camera. Oh really? Yeah, I'll I'll send it to you. Oh yeah, I'd love to see that. I'd love that. Yeah. I don't do enough and, 3D uh, camera stuff. I should. Oh, 3D cameras are fun, man. Oh man. You watch it again. It's <laughs> so cool. And they also had the uh, Night Rider car. Oh, did they? Did they? <laughs> From Kit. the 80s. Kit. Man, I, Kit. Yeah, exactly. Kit. Yeah, yeah. I used to love that show when it was... A, a oh, time. sure, yeah. Oh, my God. It was such a nostalgic thing to see that in person. In oh, man, I oh. know. I know. Like, did it actually do the talking and all that? I think it did. I remember that, too, actually. Well, no. In the museum, no. It was just sitting there. But oh, got it. Okay. You could get really close to it. It's amazing. Pick, I pick my head inside of the cockpit and everything. It's just... So cool. That's so cool. I love what's happening here, by the way. The amount of detail you're suggesting. It's it just suggesting. Like it's super complex in yeah. there already. But and that's, and that's really... Strokes, so. Yeah, yeah. It's so cool. It's, it's the same it's as the character. Lot, it? um, what? By, by adding enough contrast uh, with um, dark and, and bright color yep. that does the trick. Yeah, it's so cool. Yep. It's very... It's that Star Wars, you know, Greeble thing. Um, yeah where you're just you're 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 but it like you said 
it, it has to be somewhat grounded in reality for it to be believable. Otherwise, it's yeah. just not. I struggled a little bit when I was designing the spaceship. Yeah. The interior. I struggled because I wanted to add detail and tubes and things. and uh -huh. <laughs> But I had no idea what they did. It's like, I don't know what this does, but it looks cool. It looks cool. That's what matters. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. It always helps me to come up with things, you know, apart from looking at reference, of course, if you do like a super quick sketch or something, it always helps me to think about um, what this cable could do, right? Like to actually think about it, oh, maybe there's an AC unit, so I have to yep. power it, or, you know, there's yeah. a monitor. So like, if you think of it like that, you know, like I usually can bullshit my way through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, you're right, yeah. you're right. You're right. It's all fake functional stuff, but if it's based yeah. in some reality, it kind of works. I, I'm messing with this way too much. Okay. Um, let's see. So this one wants to also be a little dark on the bottom. So this is half of the blower on top. It's uh, funny how the detailed stuff is less detailed than the rest of the car. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is the funny thing. You're right. It is about stepping back and looking at the whole thing. So, like, generally, the engine wants to feel as detailed as this and this, but not in the same ways, I guess, once it comes down to that's yeah. where it's like an illustration. I'm going to stand back at the end and put the highlights on everything. But you're right. Uh, it is, it's like go, you go back and forth. Um, so I'm going to give yeah, this a little Yeah, but also hold. like how it's constructed, right? Like you would think the back of the car is much more sim simple, simpler. But <laughs> right, 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 actually right. Actually, the engine is much lighter weight. <laughs> right, know? right, right. Like in terms of geometry. Geometry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. Like all this. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, th this was, could also have been made differently. I could show you different stuff later. But anyway, here we go. So there's this. That's half of this. That's going to work, I think. And then uh, I want this to be brighter up here, but I wanted it to be a little bit of a different metal. Okay, good enough. Now, uh, let's finish some more suspension stuff. I want to give this a feeling of chrome. And chrome, again, is just the hard, hard divide of light and dark. Um, mm -hmm. the shinier, the harsher that divide is the more brushed metal, the softer yeah. that divide. Uh, okay. So there's that. That's good enough for that. Let's add the headlights. We want to add some headlights. We want to add a grill. So the grill is, uh, I was going to do it separately, but I'll just do it as one. So a half a grill generally wants to be something like. this what i always found interesting is you know how chrome or metal in general seems to be silver uh -huh. it's not really right like it feels silver uh -huh. but all it's doing is reflecting the environment in a different way yeah. than reality right like, it's just it's just reflecting like for example a mirror for me Mm -hmm. It's silver. <laughs> right, right. The mirror is just reflecting the environment like completely as it is, right? So, it's it's so weird when you think about mirrors. Yeah, that's why and... it's difficult to paint because your brain is telling you, oh, it's something metallic is silver, but it's really not. Right, so right. So that's why you need to know um, how to paint it and how light or color is reflected in, in order to be able to create that type of illusion right? right of that material too because yeah. it's like if it's chrome versus paint versus like brushed, uh, metal. brushed metal it's different yeah. like chrome has the hard edge yeah. and then in brushed metal if it was black brushed metal it would soften the edge but you'd have a it's second like gradation up here it's this is a strange phenomenon where you both of them have a gradation but this one has two this one has one soft and one hard, the brushed has two soft, and this one is stronger. So it, it tends to work, I guess, when you do that. But it's, it's the roughness. Right? It's the roughness. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> in, in PBR, in PBR talk. <laughs> uh, so I do this where I draw it, and then I like use a grab tool just to kind of like give it a little bit of a curve if I wanted to. But you know, do you want to save? Yes, good idea. 
Yeah, half an hour in. Yep, good. Okay. So to do the uh, uh, lines of the grill, you know, this is where I can get stylized and fun too. Again, it's like cartooning or illustration. It's fun uh, to play with it. So you want to do... Like a tapered line like that is kind of the way you might sketch, you know, where you, you release pressure on your pencil as you, as you draw. Uh, it gives you like a sense of sort of sketchiness. And you can do the same with, with this. Actually, before I do that. So... And because I know that's a gap, it'll and this is metal, it'll catch a highlight, so I'll just dupe it. This is the easiest way to do it. It's a little costly, but it's fine, usually. Okay. Oh, and, yeah. So it and, gives the illusion of... Yeah, that it's like... It's a bevel. It's like a beveled a edge. Bevel, yeah. bevel metal. So, like... And now I can simply dupe and scale. Yeah. A couple yeah, of times and that looks well. pretty good and then you can you know grab tool that that's actually a very clever uh, way of assigning it mike sure <laughs> thanks i mean yeah, this pretty cool, man. started to come out i mean i do this in 3d too but it's just not as free and i don't get to do this stuff as much um, and then what's cool is because this is like vertex painting basically you could do this in maya but not nearly as easy um, once you have this, uh, I probably need to do one more just to get it to the middle. You're going to mirror that, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to mirror it. So, like, that's about the middle. And what's yeah. nice is you can, um, oops. And this, this right now looks like white paint, so I don't want that. I want it to look like the same metal as this, so I'll just go in and... And where where it breaks, where the metal bends sharply, it's probably going to reflect something differently. So you will, and that's where a different brush stroke helps. Um, same with this. It's like this is a vertical pole it's going to reflect the horizon in the middle so it'll be darker in the middle and it'll be warmer down here Makes sense, yeah. uh, and it'll be more like the horizon color up here and this would also be more or less gray but then same thing as I did with the engine block um, do that add some fur. huh what was add that some uh, soon sparkles coming at the end <laughs> <laughs> so you do this and then oops and then you want to darken probably a little bit okay so that's cool something like that Right? That's about half of your grill. I don't know that I even... Yeah, I do probably need that. Um, this will be dark back there. Okay, so that works. And now for the Farkle part, too. You could go in there and do like... You know... The bevel. The bevel. And again, I would do it like this. You taper it a little bit. Yeah. And that's one. And then for your other... Oops, you can, you know, this is what's cool too, is like what Daniel is doing or uh, on like the corners of the mouth, things like that. You can just do things like this, yeah, which indicates a free, free handed. Yeah, free handed because it kind of looks fun and stylized and it also gives the illusion of it slightly filleted or, you know, curved right on that instead of such a hard edge. Um, use the, use the, Flat brush for that. I do. 
I yeah. do, and you don't have to because honestly, if you use this, you'd get it to read from every direction. But yeah, I use the sphere. The but... sphere, right? Yeah, I, I debated doing yeah. that. Normally, because I wanted to look. 3D yeah, from, from all like angles. Yeah, like from good. here, yeah, that yeah. disappears, right? Which sucks. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the only reason I would use that. I totally agree. But, and remember, it does add draw calls, but sometimes it's worth it. You, If you put all that in one, you know, that's one combined draw call, you could say. Put yeah. all of your farkles. So that's cool to me. Like, that kind of stuff is what illustrators do when they draw cars. They actually draw illustrators. And this is something you could never do. That Farkle is perfect. I'm going to use it again, right? So you can, like, you can't do this in yeah. illustration. Um, I mean, you could do it in Photoshop, I guess, but you can't in this. So it's kind of cool to play around. Duping the Farkles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah duping the Farkles, basically. <laughs> and you don't want to get too many. If you get too many, the car looks like it has pigeons hanging out <laughs> above it, if you know what I mean. So... Oh, yeah. Right? So, like, that's one. But that's about it. And then you might... And then the other thing is... These will hit some sort of highlight at the top, too. So, you could just do that quickly. Like that. Mm. Yeah. And that's good for that. Let's do the headlights. Headlights, same thing. It's like a dark back... With a glass front. And so... Basically, you can do that. About here. Um, and the, the direction of that stroke, even though it's a ooh, circle painful. only, mm -hmm. that stroke that is made. The, the direction, the internal direction that it has is important because of the gradient that you're going to do later on. Yes, yes. So uh, you're right. Like, it's doing this yeah. right now, which is important. If I, had, if I had done it like brought, this, it, not yeah, as good. You can have a horizontal gradient right, in there. Right, right. So now I can actually... No, I think it's actually better if you do it 180 degrees. A 90 oh, really? degrees rotation. Yeah, because then you can do the gradient from the bottom to the top. Like a sky gradient. Oh, right, right, right. You're right. This is actually fewer yeah. polys. So this is more polygons. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this gives me, I can do this gradation of the horizon better. Yeah, yeah. you exactly. can do that. Yeah, yep, that's yep. what I was saying. Yeah. Yep, 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 gotcha. Yeah, I was reading the uh, polys the other way. So basically, that's why it's it's important, you know, to look at that stuff. It's actually really useful. Yeah. Um, the back of this is like essentially one of these. So I'll do that. Can you um, basically show the people very quick what happens if you colorize it with a full color to the, the front um, glass? So yeah. People can see what would happen, what we just meant with the direction, because I think it's a little bit abstract. Totally, totally. Uh, I'll um, do if it. If you just colorize oh, full second. opacity. Okay. So uh, this portion. guy. Okay. So there's this lens, right? So, mm -hmm. so let's do like white. Right? So that's white. And if we if we want to make it look like glass, we're gonna do so remember it's like the iris. Uh, of the eye, it's actually concave what you're seeing. You're seeing the inside of this thing, which is mm -hmm. concave. So it's going to the bottom will reflect the sky, which is uh, purple-ish. Right? So, so you see how we were talking about, I, he can do the gradient. I can the do the gradient. If yeah. it was rotated 90 degrees, this wouldn't work because the stroke direction would be wrong. Right. So here I can get this to this. Oh, and remember, the middle of chrome is the darkest. So you're going to get... Yeah, at the horizon, right? So technically, that's what it's doing. Um, and I want to obviously have... Right? So that's pretty much, if you were to study that, 
is what's going on in there, except that, like, again, you could go crazy. But you see how much gradation I'm getting out of this? This would have never yeah. worked had I had it this way. Exactly, yeah. So I can just dupe that to show you. All right, guys, I have, I have to hop off the call. But All right, uh, thanks for showing this, Mike. I'm yeah, no worries. Uh, check right, the rest of it later. So you see, guys, um, if I tried to paint the bottom... See you guys. See, uh, it See goes you know, all the way up the thing. It's like, oh, I don't have control over vertical. So that's why. Yeah, that's what I was saying because yeah. it can be deceiving. Because it the can. Shape of the, 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 the shape that you drew, it looks the same. It looks the same, right? <laughs> Whether you rotate it this way or this way, but then you have to know how quill works and you have to know, oh. That's right. i got to be careful with the direction of that stroke. Like because you would think this, that's enough. I want to paint it. Yeah. Yeah, like, see, this edge right here captured the dark. This, this, and this captured that. So it is actually important. Whereas I, you would think this would be enough. It's not going this no. way. Um, okay, what so took you, me a second was to understand that it's flipped like, uh -huh. inside of it. Yeah. Is it because it's a, it's a curved, concave surface? Yes. That's the reason? Yeah, it's actually, the, there's a reflective dish in there. And then there's a mm -hmm. clear glass lens over it. So here we don't see the clear glass lens. We're actually seeing what's inside there. Mm, that's, that's why it's like the, the, like, the the iris. like the iris. Yeah. Uh, okay. So here I'm going to do this reverse on this guy. This is going to be now see this is drawn in the wrong direction, right? So this ideally would have been drawn the other way so that the gradation instead of working this way would work this way, but it's okay. I'll compensate um, by just duping it. So this is definitely not the best way, but it'll work. What's nice yeah, too is with Will, yeah. it gives you a hard edge, which is kind of nice. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so the other thing I want to do is give this uh, just a bit of a farkle. Right, so you're just going to highlight this guy like that. Mm -hmm. Nice. And people often ask, like, "Ugh, I hate doing in, you know, working in VR because I have to redo strokes a lot." And it's like, that's life, really. I know there's no way to get around that. I think you get better as you go, but I, I wind up paint undo, paint undo, paint undo a lot to get the right stroke. Uh, it yeah, doesn't. Yeah, and you can always edit it with grab tool. True enough. It. True enough. So yeah. it doesn't really bug me. I don't think it slows me down at all versus you know other 3D. Um, I, I want this I usually to go around. Yeah, I usually go around that uh, by activating the grid so you can see the topology. Yes, uh, but I see what you mean. Sometimes it's hard to see the depth. It is. It is. And sometimes, you know, like even for that stroke, the taper doesn't quite work the way you want. But again, the uh, thick and thin tool is cool for that, too. So let's do that. Hmm. Right. Okay, so I'm just playing with this at this point, but basically there's that, right? And now that we have like the headlight and all that done, I can also, oh, I wanted to also, I do think for a headlight, it's pretty important to get the top to really shine too. So I'll go ahead and get that. Okay, so something like this. And then if we want it to be turned on, we would probably, either repaint that or do a second one that's like you know color of like a lit up headlight basically because that just overwrites everything else the lens and everything so that's how it would look if it was lit and if it if it's off at this time of day it more or less looks like this and you might get a tiny highlight like that you know, on the lens um, somewhere, like like you know this little highlight here. That's about it. Okay, so you got that. You got that. Um, there's usually some some frame material down here that's like supporting the front of the engine. Your A arm. These are all like suspension components, and all of these I'll grab and just do a darken on because they're 
basically the shadow being cast on them. Same with this. Same with this. Yeah, shadow and ambient occlusion. And ambient occlusion and all that good stuff. Um, you get all that in there. Uh, looking pretty decent, I think. Oh, let's see. Cool. Yeah, so there's that. Okay. So now you can very much... You know, then I, I you could put trans uh, the the like rear axle transmission hanging out back here or whatever, but that's very much it. And then you, you know, also this is the other thing is again you're faking stuff. So when things don't quite look real, it's because I know there happens to be like framing here, and I'll just go ahead and do that. This gives the illusion that this thing has paneling here that's got some thickness and then there's a different material for the firewall mm. um so again this is where it's like cartooning or you know caricaturing you're you're really indicating more than there is there uh this would also catch a little bit of a highlight okay good enough yeah, so then I just go into the layers and I start uh, duping. You basically, since I've modeled this pretty much on the half line, I can I can very much just I think uh, dupe dupe the body. So you duplicate, and you want to mirror it on Z. And there's always going to be some adjusting, so. You're going to intersect. So already you can see where like stuff is wacky. But what you want is you want your body to be the canopy to be aligned first. So that's about the right proportion. That's where you know how much you overshot your center line. Um, So this is where you can start deleting some. Start deleting, basically. Uh, yeah. And then where you need it. Again, it's like grab tool is your friend. <laughs> you know and a lot of this stuff it depends how accurate you want to be to the model i'll show you like again with the lincoln i was trying to be very accurate so i wasn't doing as much of this but it really depends um so there's the body then i gotta mess with the engine and the nice thing is that's on its own layer oh because when you do this Duplicate and mirror the group. Not yeah, I duplicated and mirrored the whole group. So, oops. Okay, makes sense. What's going on? And now you can adjust oh. individually. That's yes, cool. yes, exactly. Um, oh, I was in the wrong one. Sorry. Uh, there we go. So this is engine, but I did get some of those reflections in there. Not great. I ideally wanted to move out of that layer, but it's okay. Um, I can still be an engine and know that I'm only grabbing engine stuff by, by selecting all this. Right. And so I don't want to move this. I want to move the engine block in the grill. So I'll mostly just do that, honestly. Oh, you don't want to move the... Uh... No, because I know that's pretty pretty dead on. And... Oh yeah, the, the, the exhaust pipes are in the right place. It's just exactly, the exactly. So you're kind of like, you know, if you do your mirroring well, you can avoid all this. Yeah, but no, but it just, it's good to show you like how it doesn't really matter, you know, how you really construct it, as long as you know what the final outcome should look like. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know just that... Heads up, you've hit the 50 minute mark. 50? Okay, cool. Um, with this, it's the same thing. I'm going to merge this with this until it works. 
And then I'm going to let's see, probably grab, oops. And this is where you could start to um, do this. Now I'm just selecting anything I want because I know that part is fairly easy to grab. And there, that just moved all of it. So it doesn't really matter. You will want to make sure your engine is, you know, pretty. Like, sometimes you don't want to. Um, sometimes you don't want to uh, mirror everything in an engine. Yeah, but in this case, I did. It's okay. I happen to know what works and what doesn't. But if you, you know, if you want to really be cautious, you just could be more careful about where you mirror it and what you do with it. But this is where I love um, the select everything tool. It, you know, it can, it just lets you fix things that are across groups without stressing too much. Mm, yeah. um, and I know my, like my grill, the whole grill is probably off center. So I can just grab it, grab the headlights, the whole construction. And I'm using the, the center line of the car. And that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah that's pretty that's close, pretty right? Good. And you get, and your, my cylinders are off on this side, but again, not a problem. I bet if you were accurately trying to model, you could have different spawn points at different sides. Like you totally. could totally. Where you could go to each spawn point to check the top view, side view, or front or back. Absolutely. Mm. And you could, you know, in VR, you never get a perfect, you're always going to have a perspective view. It's never, like, undistorted. But, like you said, Sam, you could put a, you know, a spawn point, align it to the horizontal, snap it, bring it up here, and you'd get a really close sort of approximation. And I do, when I do model these accurately, I set up three. I do a front, top, and side. And I have pictures for each, you know, lined up like this. Um, okay, so you got this. And you can see like how sometimes in the real models, the stuff, like I'm looking at that and I see more AO in there. So I'll just go ahead and do it. But basically, this is the idea. Okay, so I can pretty much call it a day soon. Like, I want to distinguish between the manifold and the, the cylinder heads a little bit more. And I have the geo to do it, so you might as well. Okay, so that stands out a little more. Starts to look Mad Maxi too, because it's like, what's yeah. going on in there? Okay, and that's the way rat rods, and this is a rat rod. This is, you know, it's more of like a custom homemade hot rod, whereas this is not a rat rod. This is like a show car. This is a rat rod show car <laughs> so there's a difference um and i was going more for the rat rod because it's more just kind of in the quill style feels fun um this is too fat it's easy to fix you just do that now it feels like a you know more proper suspension arm wow. and okay so there's that, there's the wheels. And then for the wheels, I animated the wheels so I don't have to spend a lot of time. It's basically a keyframe four positions and rotate them. I moved the chrome hubcap off of that layer. So in car body, there's wheel loop. In wheel loop, it's got two groups, one for the front wheel, I mean back wheel, one for the front. The chrome is sitting up here, chrome back, chrome front. This isn't the best chrome, by the way. But anyway, um, the idea is chrome's going to sit still. You're going to see the reflection mm -hmm. stay like this while this spins. So, and they weren't perfectly centered. You want to make sure they're perfectly centered. But in this case, it's a rat rod. So it kind of works. Kind of feels like it's more of a jalopy, right? So once you have this rotating and, you know, they're both in the same group. So that same group is doing the loop. And if you want to speed it up, you know, how fast the car is going, basically, you just, um, 
you just go to like the wheel loop and you yeah. you can see the keyframes you just st stretch them out or bring them way in in time and then reset this clip loop and it'll just go faster so that's how you speed them up slow them down you know you just this keyframe instead of being at this point in time is like way back here and then the thing will just flip quickly uh okay so there's that so it's got its drive loop and then we want to just dupe the wheels same thing um dupe on z Nice. There we go. It was all perfectly al aligned. Okay. Yeah, that was important that I did on the grid. When I first yeah. constructed the wheel, you see it last in last week's demo, I lathed it and did it all on the grid with a flat stroke that was drawn on the grid. So I don't know how the chrome got off, but I must have nudged it at some point because that should be perfect as well. Uh, okay, so you got that. So there it is. That's how it looks when it's driving. And then it's sitting in place. Nothing's moving. This is the greatest trick. You just, you're bringing in a looping treadmill under it, basically, which Goro showed how to do. And I just brought mine in. Let me hide in all the ref. Okay. So this was constructed for a black and white scene, the road and this stuff, not for this time of day. So you'll have to forgive these hard, harsh shadows. But imagine that everything in here was dusted with this sand color. And honestly, I don't even know how hard that would be. It may not be that hard, but uh, let's see if you go to here. You can do a quick... Um... Yeah, I think it's just... Can't yeah, you like... grab all the, all the frames? I think Goro just mentioned it in a previous stream. I think so, and I forget. But let me see here. Is it just... Um... What are we trying to accomplish right now? Well, I'm trying to colorize this background, but I think it's just... It should, it should, it should be just one I frame the whole thing, right? Yeah, I think it's just uh, one frame. Let me see, let me see. And is it all transform keys? Yeah, it's all transforms, so... Thing is, if these don't exactly match, you'll see it pop, but I think it'll be all right. I'm just trying to get it close so it's not jarring. Oh, yeah, because, yeah. You know what I mean? It's going to swap... It's going to yeah. swap, but whatever. Let's just see what happens. Maybe, um, yeah. Road debris. So you can see what these are. These are just models. I only did one strip and then duped it. Yeah. So these are all dupes, and they're moved exactly on mark. Um, so this road should ideally be first painted, then duplicated. I'm doing the opposite, but it's all right. I think it'll work. Okay, so there's that. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> so the background's moving way faster than the wheels are spinning. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Whoa. Daniel? Is that proper Whoa. animation? <laughs> but that's the idea. So now... Hyperspace speed. Yeah, it's like hyperspeed. Uh, so to fix this, what you want to do is either slow the background down, which I don't, because I think that feels like you're driving or speed up the wheel rotation, which is the right thing to do, right? So once you do that, and then the other thing notice is that I've got the background is close to you. Depending on how many times you duplicate that strip of road, it can work better or worse. So that can be way back behind you or not. Um, but let's say you were only going to shoot it from like here. That's probably fine. You don't need much more. Mm -hmm. Um, and if these wheels were working, it'd be great. And then the last thing I'll show you just quickly is the dust and particles stuff, because as it's moving, it's cool to see that. Um, so let's go back to the beginning. Let's just create. Uh, see car all. I guess I can just do it in here. Call it VFX. Oops. VFX. Okay. Um, so VFX, you will go back here. It's going to be a looping frame of like just dust particles. It really does not need to be many particles. Like it could be, I mean, many frames. It could be, you know, like, I don't know, 20, 24, maybe. 
there we go a second that's like really slow uh, really fast i mean you could afford more than this um if you wanted to i know there's a faster way to do this but i want to show you like sometimes i like to get really mathematical about how many frames i'm using but really like it's not that important i guess um is this for the for the smoke yes for the smoke so okay so let's say this is like just two seconds and then i'm gonna loop that i went a little over but whatever um so i'll run it and remember the car is sitting still in space so i can just be free to paint uh, with an animated brush i use sphere and i'm going to grab the color of the road and kind of do oh actually i want to do the dust off the wheels first so and i'll go a little lighter and just do like one of these and then lengthen the time a little bit And you kind of just look at it and gauge it. The other thing that's fun is just speed lines. So like, um, you know, yeah. oops, but you want to be faster on that. And this is too like, it's almost like dust flying past the car, reflecting past the car. It's really just a stylized thing. Um, Yeah, but it helps. But it helps it sort of give a sense of motion. Yeah. Um, same with dust off of the road. It's like, bam, it's kicking. You know, it's kicking out dust, and then you might see like. So it's it literally like cartooning, and it's so. On, on that same layer, you could also draw um, on the ground. Uh huh. Little, oh, the lines. Little lines of shadow that goes really fast on the ground. And yes. The shadow of the car. So if you if you do like a couple of strokes in the like the dark lines, plane, you mean? Yeah, dark lines in the ground plane, like moving fast. I think that will also sell the speed as well. Totally, totally. Like that was a slow one, right? That I just did. But if you do well, it, if you look, if you do it fast, the, the, the background yeah, it's like the you want to do it to the stripe to the speed of these stripes. What's cool yeah. about these being slow? is it feels like the thing is free floating. Like it shot a particle of dust up. That's kind of like, you know, uh, zero gravity, but on the ground, you're right. You want it to be like the same speed and it probably needs to be really fast. It's like the shadow of the car should be like flickering and the right, right, right. Exactly. So like you match this color and go across the shadow. Totally. See that. So it's like, yeah, rocks, debris that are just flying by. Yeah. And this whole layer can be optimized. So when this is sitting still, it doesn't look good. You want to... Oh, yeah, that will be like flickering too, right? With the speed. Right. I mean, the more of this you can play with, the better. Um... Yeah, like little pickler that's moving on the, yeah yeah i mean some of the the more of that you do sometimes it starts to look like rain but it also could work it's more important to get the the streaks it's like motion blur is kind of what it is so you're kind of yeah. doing a little bit of motion blur by hand which to me is like the best way to do it yeah it's like reflecting things that are yeah, that are going by also the going the going desert by, yeah. is yellow so i'm going to pick up a little of that and throw it into the car paint yeah yeah that's cool and this is where you, you can just... mm -hmm. sorry go, go ahead, ahead. <laughs> no no that was it i was just gonna say because the thing the thing with motion blur is funny enough it's it's not real motion blur is something that cameras do and right it's usually also, an effect that is added digitally, yep. Uh, because motion blur doesn't occur in real in real life, uh, right? It's, it's a tool of to stylize. Uh, it is, it is, right? Even, well, I mean, even our human eyes uh, get motion blur. 
Thank you. There you go. I was like, you don't really, nothing is crystal clear in reality. You're always focusing in split seconds on everything, right? So in a way, a perfectly still image is not real because everything, your eye doesn't focus that way. Um, so yeah, motion blur kind of fakes, fake feels like what your eye sees, but it's not actually how your eye sees, right? Uh, okay, so this dust is cool. The other great thing about this stuff is, oh, man, I love this part. I can just select only the... Ooh, oh, I don't want to be in uh, in that. I want to only be in this. You can just select over time only the particles I want. Like, I just want some of these smoke particles. I'll just hang out for mm -hmm. two seconds, grab them, dupe them, yeah. <laughs> move them, all real time. You know, okay, these should be uh, fatter because they're going further away. Well, you can do that. There you go. <laughs> right? So that already starts to feel cool, and I can do the same back here. Grab these over time and make them a little smaller and a little more turbulent. That probably didn't look good. Anyway, so you get that. And then I grab all of those. Looks like I got some of the dirt and blew it up really big. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, though. So then I grab these, right? And this is just a stylized tune shader look. Um, I'll dupe them in the direction of the light and just tint them uh, lighter color. Mm -hmm. Oops. There, so that kind of feels like dust. And then again, you can just grab only those, do it on both. I could alternate the timing if I wanted to, but I just move them. One fun thing about multi-selecting animation like that mm -hmm. is that you can, you can stop the playback. Oh, yeah? Once you have the selection of all these frames, you stop the playback. Ah. And then you, you use grab tool, and you can reshape all those frames at the same time. So you can actually. Man, that's crazy. Really cool I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Yeah, the animation is already done, but you can reshape. But you're all grabbing them. all of them through the you whole time, not in that second? The... Interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, so you can see there, like, yeah, it depends on how smoothly you do this. You can get that to look really great. So that's that part. Flames, same thing. I mean, you just go in there and do, um, it's just a do slight. grab thing. It was. Okay, we'll see. So what you're saying, Daniel, is grab this. Yeah, grab all the frames of all, all. all the... For example, if you want to make the two smokes a little different. Uh, yeah. Right? Because it's obviously a duplicate, right? So Yeah, so like grab this one. Yeah, grab all the frames, uh, animated frames, on, on one of the sides. On only one? Okay, okay. Yeah, just to make it a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because okay, so let's grab this one. Like a, like a duplicate. Okay, and then... And then you stop the playback. Mm -hmm. just, yeah, and then use grab tool. Oh, and because they are all selected. They're flickering. They're yeah, all, that, everything is selected. Yeah, so that's grab true. Tool is, grab tool is going to affect everything. It's going to affect oh. everything. So now you can have a little variation so it doesn't look exactly the same. Wow. So you can maybe, you know, give it like a curvature or okay. something. Oh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, whatever. That's cool. And the animation is going to be preserved. Great you know, tip, Dan. Thanks. That is cool. Yeah, because you know, and the the cue that gives it away is that it's still blinking. They're all blinking when you when you stop it, so you can tell that you got them all. Yeah, look at that. I mean, my animation was choppy, but I get it. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, something. I think when I first yeah. grabbed and moved those apart, I didn't grab for the full two seconds. Well, well maybe you did. Maybe you deselected something. Yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, really, the solution is simple to that too. Just grab all these. Make sure you grab them, and just delete and redo it if you have to. I mean, it's not.
I did that for the. I don't know if you seen my space. Uh, I did. Yeah. The spaceship. There, there's this character that's drinking the zero gravity uh, <laughs> soda, <laughs> and the 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 soda is kind of floating in the air. It's kind of like, and and I did I did an brush for the all the the liquid effect, right? Aha. And then I wanted to I wanted the liquid to even to curve it. I wanted to curve that liquid even more. So I uh -huh. grabbed all the. It was already animated, but I grabbed all the frames, all the animated frames. Aha. Uh -huh. I stopped the playback, and then I, using the grab tool, I I, I sculpted. Nice. Uh, how I wanted that path to be. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And this playback and everything. It just works. Different. So cool. Yeah. Yeah, I love this stuff. I mean, oh, and then the other thing is like, oh, the dirt, it might be too high. Well, it's just like, you know, you grab it and move it down. So I won't spend that much more time. Yeah, on this. now it, now they don't look like duplicates anymore. They don't. Uh, and I, again, I, you know, that first uh, smoke could have also been better, but it, it really is fine. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah. So there's that. Okay. And then for fire. Same thing. Let's just quickly do that and we'll be done. I'll show you the link in as quickly as I can. Um, I mean, this is also like, there's so many ways to do fire. So like one of them is like, let's see, probably want less. Yeah, fire, I, I am very particular about that. <clears throat> I... I, See. in my, I prefer to do like a traditional frame by frame. For really? The base of, uh, for the base of the fire. Well, it depends on what kind of fire we're talking about. I know, I, mean, I know. Like, There's so many like kinds. These are going to be like, like little explosions. That are gonna well, fire. kind of. Yeah, you're right though. I mean, even for this, I'm not sure. Because there's also efficiency. This may not be the most efficient way to do it either. Uh, but I'm making a I turbulent. No, I think that no, actually for that is is great. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm talking about something like a fireplace, like Or what about like a I tried to do a candle once and I thought that was a challenge too, honestly. No, I've candle had luck I, would, with, uh... I would not do it with time brush. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I would, I've I would had luck with... draw a candle. Huh? Interesting. I've had luck doing um just the the one little stroke for a flame uh -huh. and adding a gradient to it and then giving it a bunch of duplicated frames and just nudge tooling it. Nudge tooling, it's a perfect little flicker. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's a good way to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here I'm just heating. Uh, because the flames of the candle don't really uh, change shape, uh, uh, or they don't flicker divide. color, right? They don't divide themselves so much. Aha! Uh -huh. you, you don't see all these particle system coming out of a little flame so. right like like all this activity if it does run because it's going to explode <laughs> <laughs> so you do something like this and then you can grab you know uh that's cool just grab these <laughs> i mean this is the joy of cool like honestly i don't do it the same way every time never it's like so different. It's fun to just play with it. Like, oh, I wanted some more heat. I don't know. Um, you know what I love about what you're doing? It's like almost at the speed of thought. It's like you're it thinking is. about how absolutely, it look. absolutely. Yeah. Even these sparks. And that is the goal. That is the goal. That is. That's yeah, why that's this for... is. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, you're right. It yeah. is. This is what I love about this, man. It's like you, the decisions you're making every second. Um. Yeah, I could do this in Maya, but I would never do this because I would spend four days thinking about it, and then I would probably just know, decide not to do it. You know, <laughs> here I'm just yeah, like, and the process, what? the process is very technical because you're gonna be moving sliders for the right. fire solver. Right, totally. You're gonna spend three hours trying to get it right. I know. And here you're just literally painting. Up, you're painting doing it. Yeah, it's just amazing. Yeah, and it's like an undo if I don't like and I mean you know and and all it's great too because it's the same three tools can do so much like like this is doesn't look good yet but I can go in here and select this and then just colorize it all and then it, it starts to work you know even though those were painted so it's like just those paint and colorized tools are enough
Um, it just works. It just works. Um, that one black one I didn't get, but whatever. Hey, Mike, it, I don't know it's if you're misfiring. Of time, but I'm not. About 16 minutes, uh, <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. I'm not at all. I don't want to be Goro, but. No, thank you for being Goro. Okay, that's good enough for this, you guys. I'll show you the link in really quickly because that's got some other stuff. So let me save this. Okay. That's awesome. Okay, so that's that. And you just grab that fire and dupe it for each one of these. Vary it. Yep. Move it to the other side. Done. Okay. Uh, so if we look quickly at, let's see. Oh. It's a lot of hot rods. It's a lot of hot rods. That was just that <laughs> one. Um, Lincoln. This is just the Lincoln file, by the way. Here we go. That's my work from home, Lincoln. This is the one. There we go. So this is the one that was in Quill Theater. So this is pretty much done the same way, but Goro helped me optimize this car a lot. Like, you know, it has fewer frames for the wheels, so they're a little choppier, but it works on Quest. And you can see all the kind of same thing. This you is what the, the, yeah. you can mute the, the sound on the theme so you can, like, we can hear. Yeah, the sound part. Lucy Shields did the sound on this, and it's great. So from out here, uh, well, we can't we can't hear you very well because of the, the music is really loud. Oh, is it really? Gotcha. Yeah. I'll stop it. Ah. There we go. Ouch. Okay, so <laughs> I'll show you this really quickly, but basically... There's a button over there. Uh, there's this, the mute button in the... Oh, for the uh, sound? Up, up, uh, in the very top. Yeah, just, yeah. Oh, got it. I never use that, I guess. Oh, there it is. There That's it good. Is, yeah. That's good so to you, know. We can see the animation now. Nice. Yeah, let's do that. Um, see the animation and, uh, yeah. There you go. Awesome. So, you know, the idea is like, since the car is still camera moves are so easy on it like i'm just zooming in while oh yeah that looks while cool. so you can do some amazing camera moves that you'd never do like you know stuff like this and then like literally transition into the car smoothly um yeah you can you can plan the layout of your scene so quickly it looks like she's lifted up <laughs> <laughs> the model moved but uh yeah uh, the fun thing about this one i was going to just show you a couple of like cool th details about th actually this is this model i had to take detail out of for quest but i'm going to show you the exact same model before um before i took everything out of there i think yeah here we go so this is pre uh taking it out and the, the cool thing is you know this is made the same way um, by the way, jounce is is the term for how much the car moves up and down on the wheels, mm. like as it's bouncing, which is really important. Um, but like with this guy, I modeled stuff to work so that like you could, <laughs> as it is in the real car. And the unique thing about nice. this car is the suicide doors. Oh no, I forgot some. I forgot some strokes. So you can see how those strokes are painted. <laughs> they need to be added to the right layer. But um, like, you know, door panels all open and close. Uh, the hood, let's see. Oops. Well, fully functional. Yeah, and I tried to keep, and this is an example of an engine that's, um, so the hood <laughs> opens this way. So this is more how I'd do the engine if I wanted to be realistic. This actually placed it in the right place, has all the right, and it's a 462. This is uh, some of the unique details of this car that I wanted to really capture. Um, oh, gosh, you really went in there, mate. I did, dude. Uh, the steering wheel actually turns properly. Let's hide uh, the model for a second. Bam. Um, and her dog. Uh, this is recreated pretty accurately off of the interior, um, including, oh, it looks like I forgot some lights, uh, this odometer. That's so cool. So, is the speedometer, um, 
all strokes or is it an image you imported? So the speedometer actually does animate. It is strokes. <laughs> and the thing that's crazy, one of the unique details of this car is this speedometer. Okay, so so take a look. So while it it accelerates, that bar goes up, right? That <laughs> reflects your speed. That's fun. In the car, the way they got this to work, believe it or not, is there is a disc, like an album, like the size of the steering wheel, size disc, mm -hmm. sitting in here like this, like a turntable. Mm -hmm. And when you accelerate, that disc has a white stripe on the edge of it. It just rotates the disc. Mm -hmm. And this piece of glass here that's in front of that disc is specially designed to just distort that thing oh, to make it look like it's going up and down. So like the extent to which the designers went through trouble to like make something just delightful, like this thing go up and down, I find to be amazing. Like, you know, that's true design for just the joy of designing. Um, you know, it's just little details like that about this car that, that I loved. Uh, this clock, these like sort of, mm -hmm. so the first car with, uh, actual four channel surround sound so this actually had speakers in four spots where you wow could actually oh and here are the buttons so it's like rear <laughs> rear right rear left you know mm -hmm. very funny um bench four. seats so yeah but this is all made the same way same same exact way that you just saw it's just that like you know a lot of strokes are made uh like you know it's like And it's nice because I can go in there and do these kinds of highlights. Like I didn't have to model this with a nice curve or this with a nice curve. I just drew this line right here. Oh yeah, there's that's a lot a, of that's enough. straight edges and whatnot. Exactly. There's a lot of there's a lot of gaps, but you don't really see it. What you yeah. see is these these stylized hot you know lines and and things like this is just easy easy. Same with this. Yeah. Same with this grill. It's a trick, but it works. It works. It works, and it's stylized, so you can't do everything this way. But for me, the way I like to do cars and they work, it, it, it works. So It's so bizarre watching it drive now with the <laughs> door open. That's, that's what you really call a suicide door right there. So, so Mike, yeah. what, uh, was there famous people that owned oh. this car? Oh, yes. Uh, definitely some famous people. Um, a currently famous person that owns this is Jay Leno. <laughs> who collects a lot of cars but uh yeah. jfk of course the the convertible of not the 1966 but the 1962 lincoln continental uh was the one jfk was assassinated in um the, the blue one uh martin luther king owned this car the 1966 lincoln but it was white um a lot of famous people it's actually the highest selling the 1966 Lincoln is the highest selling Lincoln of all time. Like it sold more than any other Lincoln. Um, it's the first unibody car. So you know how all cars are unibodies now. They're all the idea of like, there's no structural steel frame under here. It's like the metal itself is what is the strength of the car. This was the first unibody car. And it was like massive. The other thing about this car is the size. Uh, it's like a 25 gallon gas tank. So your average car has like 12, 13 gallon gas tanks. So this has like double two gas tanks. Um, what else? It's a 462 uh, upgraded engine. One of the largest engines for the Lincoln. Um, I just love the interior though. That's my favorite part. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's just a joy to sit in. It's like sitting in an antique, um, like kind of yeah. like a jewelry case, really. Uh, mine doesn't have this leather, this red leather. It's just the cream, <laughs> all sixties cream, but the red is a nice addition. I would someday do maybe. Um, but yeah. And the trunk opens too. <laughs> <laughs> wait did i open the trunk oh man i think i didn't the, is there a tell me there's a dead body in there <laughs> no there should be. <laughs> you, could fit, there. you could you could you could fit a san francisco apartment in there probably 
could you pop the hood and show us how to change the oil in it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I've I've, <laughs> I've been work on it myself, my own, because I have this car, right? So I've been doing things like changing spark plugs, at least, and changing the oil and filters. And I w I'm going to uh, one of the things I want to do. I'm taking these door panels off and re cleaning all of the gear mechanisms that move the windows up and down open this window because they're all electrical and they work but they're just so old and they need cleaning and it's kind of fun so just just for fun little hobbies like that um the car is is fun to do but yeah <laughs> <laughs> cool guys i'm yeah i'm glad you guys tuned in i should probably stop the recording now Thank you very much, oh, yeah. Mike. It was very yeah, helpful. You're welcome. I look